and conflict engages me. I mean, Doc, for example, you know, I always said, no, no, Doc, Ev and Doc, that's the way they interact with each other. It doesn't mean they're having a fight. It doesn't mean they dislike each other. They relate through confrontation, right. you know? So that's how they, that's how they talk to each, to each other, you know? And, uh, and, and that probably relates, you know? I mean, I could tell a story about my father, for example, when he died. You know. mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> Okay, my father had played hockey when he was younger, and he had a bad knee that as he got older, and he was something like 85 or 86, and very happy that he'd outlived everybody else in his family, but very pissed off because he wasn't dead, because it wasn't any fun being alive anymore, right? And so he decided that he was going to uh, have an operation to fix his knee at the age of 85 or 86, right? Um, he... Um, he had always had his heart problems and heart attacks and what at rest. He didn't have them when he was active. He had them when he was in bed or when he was at rest. And so he had this theory that if he went under anesthetic, that he would die, and you know, and that would get it all over with and a lot easier, right? Of course, the family was, oh, Dad, you can't do that. Blah blah blah. You shouldn't have this done. And so my brother phoned me and said, Dad wants to do this, and his second family are all upset about it, and you know, like, what do you think? I said, well, you know, is he in full command of his faculties? Yes. So I said, well, then I, yeah, okay, so he's going to go have his leg operated on. Uh, so he had do not resuscitate sign on everything. Went in the hospital, it was named after him, where everyone was probably terrified of him, even at 85 or 86 had his operation. Now, unfortunately, I guess he was probably disappointed because he didn't die under the anesthetic. But when he was in the recovery room, he got into trouble, right, with his heart. And they came rushing in with the crash cart, and his last words to the nurse were, Jesus Christ, woman, can't you read? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he was, even on his deathbed, he was sort of correcting people or being pissed off that life in general, you know? What is um, totally refreshing about you um, <laughs> is this wild directness. And I see it in the plays and I hear it in the conversation and you seem to get an energy out of the directness. Maybe it's the surface, the surface <laughs> substance debate that you won't stand for. I mean, you has, must have a terrible time sewing your mouth shut when you see a production you don't really like. I mean, you came to our opening night and I'm sure there are lots of second thoughts that you had and we don't have to talk about it on camera, yeah. but where do you park that then? Well, I guess as I've, I've gotten older, I've gotten better at parking it, you know. Uh, partly be because you don't, it's a kind of negative energy, it's so easy to get into a negative energy, you know, around that. And, and sometimes um, you get better over time at thinking, what do I want here, Is that like an actor? Is this my best way of getting it? <laughs> you know, I uh, find the uh, the acting community is quite considerate of each other's differences and tolerant. Mm -hmm. I find the writing community a little separate from each other as writers. I find the uh, overly generalizing, like yeah, yeah, I find the directing community the least tolerant of each other's differences, different palettes. They don't. Um, they are the least tolerant of seeing a different style. They don't care with. They don't care about. And I'm curious about that. You know, I don't see Richard Rowe as raving about, uh, you know, another director's work. I don't hear uh, whatever Dennis Garnham raving about it. But I hear actors raving about uh, actor, other actors' works. Well, they have to work with them. <laughs> you know, it's a small community, so you have to. Right. Yeah, you know, in a way that directors don't have to work with other directors. So I think that's one thing. Right. You know. Um, I also think that people, I, I did, for several years I did some reviewing in town for CBC, and, um, and I think you have to make a distinction between your personal taste and, and actually, you know, right. what is quality work or what, you know, what, and then trying to determine what it is. I'm always interested in why isn't this working for me? Okay. Uh, and, 
you know, I, I'm pretty good about personal taste because I know what my taste is, and it doesn't mean that I have to, I enjoy plays, I, like I love musicals, <laughs> which people sort of think, oh, you know, you don't love musicals, but yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I'm not so fond of naturalistic work to write or, or even to direct as far as that goes. Right. Uh, you know, I, I like, um, but it doesn't mean I can't go to a natural, you know, one of those plays, cause and effect, that kind of a work. And, and, and enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, this is a good play. I'm not, I wouldn't be interested in A, writing it, you know, right. or, or, or why, aren't you, why aren't you interested in writing naturalism? Because I think that th I want theater that has all the boring bits taken out. Sometimes natural theater keeps, it has com dialogue, it, I, dialogue isn't conversation, you know. I always want to get to the point, I guess, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, and so um, I also think that and this goes back to structure in a way. We're so bombarded with stories, you know, television, film, I don't know, book, every, every stories are everywhere. In fact, with uh, Facebook and all the rest of them, there's a million <laughs> yeah. stories out there. It's only, it's only structure that makes stories fresh, it, it, it seems to me. Right. Um, and, um, and so that's, in a way, why I'm not so interested in naturalistic work. I don't want to be ahead of the story. I want to be surprised <laughs> in so the when story. You look at so in naturalistic work, it seems to me as if I'm always ahead of the story. I'm always saying, oh, yeah. It's like, you know, you go sit down with a movie and say, oh, yeah, he's going to do this, and he's going to do that, and then she's going to do this, and then that's going to be the end. What oh, I call yeah, plays yeah, of yeah, personal yeah. psychology. I mean, plays of personal psychology, I couldn't care less about as I said, because you're always ahead of it, you're being yeah. told the same story in the same way. And I hate love stories. I don't know if I hate Doc them. Doc was a love story. Doc was a love story. Yes, Doc was a love story. But not in a straightforward not fashion. Not in a straightforward way. Doc is a soap opera. The only thing that makes it not a soap opera is the structure of it. So you think it's, I remember Guy and I sitting around saying, will anybody want to put this together? Like, right. <laughs> you know, that was the big question. Well, but it is a love story. It is a love between story. Between the daughter and the, and the father. And I think it's, an unfort it's a love story between Ev and Bob, I think. Their tragedy was that they did love each other. So you do write love stories. Yeah, I know, but that was just a sucky love story. <laughs> <laughs> but no, boy but meets girl, boy loses girl. But what of course, with that yeah. would be not so much, I suppose, well, let me see, I'm trying to wiggle out here. <laughs> <laughs> but I hate those boy meet girl ones, which is slightly different. I don't know. No, I agree. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think if I've written any other love stories. Well, Angel's Trumpet is a kind of love story too. I mean, that's and that's another thing I hate. But writing about love is different than writing a love story. Yes. Well, aren't all plays about love? I'm like, I'm good. I am wiggling here, but I do think that every play is about love of, yeah, of some sort. I mean, if you take Doc, what keeps it going is the love within it destructive love, you know, for love, searching for love, unfound love, lost love. And love, love that is unable to overcome the limitations of time and place and personality. Right. You know, she, I always thought that Bob was like Ev. That's their problem. What right. She was as driven to be the best nurse that there ever was as he was a doctor and, right. and that was blocked for her. So she had no respect for the job that would be assigned to her, looking after her kids and being, you know, her competitive drive had to be playing bridge or, or the golf course or mm -hmm. being whatever of the IODE and all of those meant nothing to her. So it, all of her avenues were blocked and in fact they were very, they were very much alike. But Love that wasn't, an, I mean, it's a love story in which love isn't enough. Love isn't enough. <laughs> you know? Let's talk about Doc a bit more because you've directed it. No. Yeah. You've seen other directors do it. What's it like for you as a writer? So like, there's Doc, you know, the play about your mother and father in New Brunswick in the hospital. Guy Sprung directs it. Diana LeBlanc directs it. And you direct it. How do you sit there when, because I saw a guy's production, mm -hmm. uh, Deanna's production was very different. I was in it, didn't yep. see it, but was very different. And she 
did something to what I couldn't well, quite tell, and I think I can sort of see what your production was like. How do you live through that as a writer to see your work pushed around like that? I always find it interesting. I like it when it's pushed around. Uh, nothing would be more boring than going and seeing it. Like I always say, the image I have in my head as the playwright is the smallest image that exists of the play. Uh, when other people come, other when actors come and bring their particular, Great. you know, a ghost the interpretive lens that they have in terms of who they are, and uh, the same with the with director and set, uh, you know, all of those things. I always find it. I always find it really interesting. Now, sometimes I might query a choice. I might say, oh my God, I never thought of that. You know, it's an interesting choice. Or sometimes I might think, I'd really like to ask how they justified that, you know, say, reading of that particular moment, um, because that's what I'm interested in. Tell me what brought you to there, right? Um, but you never see a scene that's mashed up and destroyed and go, well, why did you destroy it that way? You just you, didn't understand a thing about that scene. How my blood that uh, when Blood Relations was done at the Tarragon, I didn't know what the fuck the play was about. Yeah, I, which was what the review said, and I could only agree with it. Right. Uh, Who directed that? Do you remember? Yeah, Cease. Remember oh, Cecil O'Neill. Yeah. Yes, I know Cecil. <laughs> yes, we did The Woods, and I feel the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was irritating about it was he had directed Generations, right? Right. Uh, which was also, a, you know, I, I knew... I, I, I knew we were in trouble when we, I went out for a drink with the actors and there, in that play there's a young man who sort of is saying, uh, please sell my section of the farm, I want, I can do this with it, I'm a law I'm, he was a young lawyer, etc. Uh, the whole part of it for a while is I have to ask granddad about this, I have to ask granddad, I have to ask granddad, finally he gets to be alone with granddad. And he says, Granddad, there's something I want to ask you. And, and the granddad says, you know, what the hell are you doing with this law thing? And he has a little thing that kind of puts down what it is he's doing. And then he says, well, what is it you want to ask me? And the kid says, never mind, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you another time. So we go out for a drink. The guy who's playing it says, I need to ask you something. Like, we've been talking about it in the rehearsal hall. You know, what is it he wants to ask his granddad then? Like, what the hell do you think he wants to ask him? Because the whole front third of the play has been talking about what he wants to ask his granddad. Oh, yeah, we thought about that, but we thought it had to be more than that. No, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Um, so I didn't really think that Cease was the right person to do Blood Relations, but Bill assured me that he would direct it, right? <laughs> and then he was doing a, remember the big puppet show, Felix, what's yes, his name? Felix yeah, Murp. And yeah. it went on tour? Yeah. Well, they had to do some rethings on it, and Bill right. went off to do that and said, you know, Cease will be there, but I'll drop in. Yeah. I remember sitting there, and I had this unfortunate habit. Sometimes when I see a show that's really, that is quite painful, like I, I hear myself making little sounds, like, oh, like. little sighs, <laughs> you know, like, and I, I have to stop, and like, oh. And the other thing I start to do is I'm kind of, I know I do this, I'm kind of like a dog. You know how they press up against your leg? Well, I start leaning against the person that I'm there with. For, I am there with somebody, or else I'm leaning against whoever I don't know that's sitting in the seat next to me. 